All right, I've got some glow-in-the-dark stuff. I love glow-in-the-dark stuff. Let's turn off the lights and see what happens. Whoa, glow-in-the-dark stuff. Let's take the scissors off and look. There's the shadow of the scissors in the glow-in-the-dark stuff. I love glow-in-the-dark stuff. It'll glow for a long time. This is amazing stuff. I've discovered something kind of interesting. Uh, let's get a fresh sheet. It hasn't been exposed to light yet. Here we go. And in the dark, you really can't see anything. And so I could write on it with a light bulb. And this is just a little uh, keychain light, but it's pretty bright, and I can write on it. That's kind of neat. Ooh, and it glows. However, if we were to analyze what's happening a little bit more carefully, we'd see something interesting. Let's take the red component of the light. I have some red light here. There are some red lights. And when I put these on here, It really is having no effect at all. I have an insanely bright red light. This is a one watt LED. This is incredible. And this is having no effect. No effect. The red light can't get this stuff to glow in the dark. Now the idea is we're always taught that light hits it, causes electrons to jump up, and then they fall down over a period of time, which is why it glows for a period of time. The electrons get excited, they go to a metastable state, and then eventually they fall down. What is it about the red light that is unable to produce this effect? Well, let's try a different kind of light. I've got a, a yellow light. A pretty bright yellow light. And I'm not getting much results out of this either. No glow, no residual glow. Well, let's get a green light. I've got a green laser here. This green laser ought to do me good. Let's try it with a green laser. And the green laser is having no effect. The green, and this is a bright, bright laser. It's having no effect on whether it glows in the dark. So now let's go with blue. Tiny little blue light, nothing really special, but we discover that the blue light does cause it to glow. The blue light has an effect on it. This is incredible. Somehow it's not the brightness or the amplitude of the light, it's the color of the light. And this is one of the basic principles in quantum mechanics, that somehow not the amplitude of light, but the frequency of light is an indication of its energy on the quantum scale. And this is a pretty nice little demonstration, especially if you were to get a uh, violet laser, which is basically an ultraviolet laser. And, and this is, it just takes over. And the ultraviolet laser uh, causes it to fluoresce almost immediately. And even though the ultraviolet laser doesn't produce as much visible light as the green one did, it has a much greater effect on my glow-in-the-dark stuff. Because apparently the energy of a light is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. The energy of a light is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. That's cool, huh? Huh? Written in glow-in-the-dark stuff. I could try writing that with a red light. Guess what? No effect. The energy of a light, nah. The frequency, or the color of the light, is a function of the energy. Red light, no effect. We could say that the energy of a light is equal to Planck's constant, which is H, times the frequency of the light, which is F. It's not the brightness of the light, it's not the amplitude, but it's the color of the light. The frequency that has the bearing on this quantum energy. I could become a performance artist, I'm convinced of that. I have some wild things. But this would be, you'd have to come and see it, and it would only exist for a very short time. The artist would have to recreate it. And then by the end of the day, 
the piece would be completely gone. I could get some funding to do a national tour. I'd be willing to travel with my amazing physics art show. 